Hey, this is Rick from 4 Community, creating community spaces so you can connect with others and also with God. When I was like really, really young, I pulled off one of the coolest moves that I have I, I had ever done in my whole childhood in playing a group game. I was sent off to some kind of summer camp, and at that summer camp, we were playing capture the flag. And at some point I got separated from my group. I had no idea where I was. I was lost in the middle of the woods, not knowing what was going on. But suddenly um, I was, it felt to me like I was being attacked um, and chased by teenagers from the opposite team. It was quite scary for me as a little guy, seeing a group of teenagers running after me. So I ran as fast as I could, and of course the little guy of me at that time was running at about breath quickly. And so here's the coolest move I ever did. Um, I leapt into a bush. I just did a Superman dive right into a bush. And I kind of got stuck in the bush. You know, think, think of like throwing a stick or something into a bush or into a tree and, and it getting stuck there. That was me. I, I Superman dove into a bush and I got stuck in the bush you know, and, and I and I couldn't move, and I stayed there because I didn't want to get caught. And I'm like, okay, maybe I'm just going to blend in, and I did. I blended in. I was stuck. Sort of my feet were kind of up, and I was down a little bit, and I saw them as they ran by me, and I didn't say a word. I didn't move. It was the coolest move I had ever pulled off in a group game. What about you? If you remember playing these silly kind of group games when you were younger, why don't you pause the video and share a story with the person that you're watching with around the coolest move you ever did as a kid in one of those group games. This video is based on Psalm chapter 3, which has absolutely nothing at all to do uh, with silly group games, but I'm going to use my illustration of a silly group game, Capture the Flag, to draw out the meaning of Psalm chapter 3 so we can really understand what's going on here. Because Psalm chapter 3 is a psalm about loneliness. Psalm chapter 3. O oh Lord, I have so many enemies. So many are against me. So many are saying God will never rescue him. But you, O oh Lord, are a shield around me. You are my glory the one who holds my head high. I cried out to the Lord and he answered me from his holy mountain. I wonder if there's any mail. Oh, okay. Hey, come down, it's dinner time. Ugh, coming. Okay, I'm coming. Just give me a sec. Hey kids, don't forget to look in the background for all the cool characters. And don't forget to watch this week's episode of Connect HQ. Bye! Here's what I think we learn in at least the first two parts of Psalm chapter 3. This teaches us what to do when we feel really, really lonely. Here's the backstory of this psalm so we can understand some of what's being written here. King David, the guy who wrote this at this point in his journey, is fleeing from his throne, from his capital, because his son is betraying him and seemingly he has turned the nation against him. He's lost his throne, lost his city, lost his nation. This will eventually lead to a battle which ends with his son's death and King David's restoration back to his throne. But it's a very, very sad story in the Old Testament. This psalm seems to help us understand what's going on inside of David's head and in his heart during one of the most loneliest moments in David's life. In these first two parts of the psalm, I want to pull out what loneliness looks like and what we can do to help us return to some kind of sense of, uh, of healthy emotions. Here's the first point I want to make based on the first part of the psalm. Name your feels. The text says, O oh Lord, I have so many enemies. So many are against me. So many are saying God will never rescue him. 
as a child playing the game of capture the F flag. I was so very impressed with myself over my cool move. I mean, I probably didn't look impressive kind of being on a decline plane <laughs> inside of a bush and it took me a little while to get out of it, but man, I deked out a couple of teenage counselors and the kids that were running after them trying to keep up. I felt awesome about myself until it was no longer awesome. Suddenly the reality started sinking in. I was in the middle of nowhere. I was lost. There was no one else around. I was totally alone. And if I happened to see somebody, it was going to be the kind of person who wanted to chase me down and hunt me. I was surrounded by people that did not want to help me. Everyone around, even though I couldn't see them, was an enemy. And the longer that I stayed alone, reflecting <laughs> on what I had gotten myself into, the more horrible I was feeling because I was feeling this deep sense of aloneness. Hold on to that illustration just for a moment because I'm going to use that to help us understand what's going on in the text here. Our natural biological hardwiring leads us to connect with others, to co-regulate with others. When we have too much alone time, our nervous system lacks part of what it needs to ground and to get into our emotional comfort zone. Being alone isn't a problem. You know, being alone is pretty healthy for us sometimes. Moments of solitude as a discipline can be very, very healthy, very grounding. Being alone to catch your breath is an awesome moment, but too much of being alone is just too much. For David, his loneliness was way too much. He's lost a big part of his family. His son has risen against him. He's lost his throne. He was entering into this complete moment, complete season of loneliness. I mean, look at these words. Everyone is out to get me. I have so many enemies. People are talking about me. As I was reading this, these words are why I was reminded of when I was a child playing that game Lost in the Woods. You know, I kind of get, as a little guy, I kind of get what, what David's saying. Is any of this resonating with you? Can you identify with David because you've experienced this at some time too? This kind of thing happens to people when they have relationship problems, when they have work problems, job losses, financial crises, like name it, right? There are so many things that can take us out of our emotional comfort zone and make us feel absolutely alone. When we lose the ability to co-regulate, that aloneness can start settling in. It can feel like we're on a ladder, slowly sinking down into darker places, co-regulating so that we can stay in our emotional comfort zone is so important. And we really feel it when we lose it. And that weight slowly feels like it increases. Co-regulating is just a word that means that you and I function together to calm ourselves down so that we can recognize that our surrounding is safe. And we don't have to escalate, we don't have to be afraid. We, we de-escalate and we calm down in the presence of other people. When we miss the opportunity to co-regulate because we're spending too much alone time, or we think that everybody is, is out to get us, then we come out of our emotional comfort zone and we can sometimes start to go to dark places. I actually like what David's doing in this psalm though. He is exploring the experience. He's sitting with this aloneness, trying to figure it out. He's wondering, what does this really feel like? And what is this really doing to me? He is naming his feels. This video isn't meant to take the place of a friend or a therapist, but I would like to help you along a little if you can feel lonely sometimes and if there's not enough people around you to help you regulate your emotions. David names his feelings. Naming it is a really, really good start. Here's something David does to move forward, to help himself get out of the muckiness of what it feels like to be alone. Name your resources. The text says, But you, O Lord, are a shield around me. You are my glory, the one who holds my head high. I cried out to the Lord, and he answered me from his holy mountain. When I was a little guy, sitting, <laughs> hiding alone in the woods, listening to the scary teenagers around me hunting me. What I did is I got my game face on. I quickly remembered, hey, this is Capture the Flag. 
I know what to do. I'm a small, sneaky guy. None of the leaders can see me. If I get that flag back to my own base, wherever that is, because I'm lost and I don't know where it is, but if I do that, I will be the symbol of glory as everybody celebrates me and everybody begins to chant my name. I mean, I'm dressing the story up a little bit to talk about loneliness, but honestly, this was a really cool moment for me. I sat with my loneliness and my fear for a moment, and I remember transitioning in my thoughts to what my strengths were and what my purpose was, and I put my game face on, got myself up, and continued to move forward. That's not so easy to do all the time, though, particularly when we grow up. When it feels like the loneliness has brought you so low that your feet are weighted down in the muck of despair, it's really hard to pick your feet back up and start climbing your way back up that ladder to your emotional comfort zone. And it wasn't easy for David. To make the transition to climbing out of the loneliness, he listed the resources that he had. And they're awesome resources. He, he, here's what he says. It says, God is his shield. Yeah, the people are out to get him, but God stands between he and his enemies. He says that God is his glory. David's glory is really his sense of self-worth and purpose that God gives him. And God answers him. And this one is so essential. David co-regulates with God. We need both God and people. But here is a moment where there's no people around, so what does he start with? He starts with God. He co-regulates with God. He leans into God to help him uh, restore his sense of safety, restore his sense of security, and get his emotions under control again. I wonder if any of this is resonating with you. Like, have you experienced what it's like to get your game face back on and to start recognizing the strengths that you have right now? David lists his agency. David listed what he currently had available to him, and he used that to create a sense of safety around him. He had control. He had the capacity to climb back out of his emotional um, goop that he was in and into his emotional comfort zone. He had the capacity to connect with God. For him, that's what it took. He had the capacity to co-regulate with God, to lean into God, and find his sense of safety and comfort in God so that he could calm himself down. This isn't a fix-all solution here, but it's an idea here that might be very, very helpful. We co-regulate so that we can help each other stay in our emotional comfort zones. We are biologically hotwired to do this. More than that, we have the capacity to take ownership over this. We take a moment to sit with our feelings and see what that's like, and we name them. And if we can name them, that means we have power over them. And then we take a look at our own strengths and be mindful of the agency that we have to make a change. And then we seek God and we seek others. And this part is so awesome, I think. We have the agency to connect with God all of the time. Yes, we need other people. That never goes away. And yes, we need God. That never goes away either. Co-regulating with God can be absolutely awesome. And it's something that we can do all of the time. Here's a summary. I'm going to encourage you to co-regulate. That's a strange word, isn't it? But it's an awesome word. We are biologically hardwired to connect with other people, to give ourselves a sense that, uh, that the world around us is safe and there's no reason for us to get our fear center of the brain all active and getting us in a, an emotional kerfuffle. If there's a takeaway, I think this is what it is. It is essential to connect with others and also with God. We are biologically hotwired to co-regulate with each other and with God. While I was that little guy playing capture the flag, my story ends well. I snuck on my belly in the forest all the way up to the flag to take it. I have no idea how I found it. I was wandering aimlessly through the woods for what it seems to me to be decades. It just felt like a really long time. And I came to the edge of a clearing in the woods, hiding behind a bush or something. And, uh, and what I saw, I saw the flag, and what I saw were other children, <laughs> roughly the same age as me, terrified because their teenage leaders had left them too. And they were in the middle of the woods, terrified with each other, listening to the sounds and being scared from all of the crackles. And so uh, I actually had 
some empathy for them because I felt the same way. I didn't get up and I didn't grab the flag. I got up so they could see me and I walked toward them and they walked towards me. And we spent the rest of the game just talking because aloneness really, really sucks. We need to co-regulate. That's how my story ended. My story didn't end with me taking the flag and running away. I had no idea where I was anyways. My story ended with me co-regulating with a group of people because we all needed to calm ourselves down together. If you need some help, please reach out. If you feel lonely, please reach out. You can connect with us at Four Community. You can connect with someone like me as a psychotherapist or a pastor or a helper. You can connect with God. God is so interested in getting connected with you that his story includes Jesus in a manger, Jesus on a cross, Jesus in a grave, and Jesus resurrected. He's the only real forever friend that you can have because he is forever and because he's a friend. That's it from me to you for now. Would you please like, would you please share, would you please subscribe, and would you please also ask for the link so you can join us in one of our gatherings on Sunday at 10.30 or 6 o'clock for community creating community spaces so you can connect with others and also with God. See you next time.